You're listening to a Leisure Moment Podcast with your host, Dietra Helvey, who's always ready to have a casual conversation about her love for literature. Just when you think the casual conversation is over, it isn't really. There's more to say, there's more to chat about, and there are more connections to be made. Michelle and I have a lovely conversation about her fairy song trilogy and all the latest happenings in her publishing journey. Get your favorite coffee ready and your comfy cozy seat as we have a casual conversation. Enjoy! Hi Michelle! Hi Dietrich, how are you? I'm doing great! Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Um, we are just so excited to talk to you this morning about your young adult fantasy trilogy. Yeah. Fairy song. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I first um, became familiar with your trilogy through a blog tour um, that we had the pleasure of highlighting Bittersweet. That's right. Yeah, I remember. So tell us a little bit about the trilogy before we get started. Okay, well, uh, the first two books in the series are out. The Fire and Ice was the first one, and Bittersweet. And then the third, which is tentatively named Darkest Light, should be out next year. I'm hoping. I think that's the either the end of this year or possibly next year. And, um, yeah, it's a, a, a young adult fantasy romance saga. It, it has sort of the feel of a, an epic, you know, sweeping Lord of the Rings kind of a, um, a feel to it, which mm-hmm. sounds really grandiose <laughs> for me to say, hey. but that's kind of <laughs> how it feels to me, you know? It kind of is, is just sort of larger than life. Mm-hmm. Who is your main character? The main character is Lorelai, Lorelai Lundgren. She's 18, and she, she's she been sort of blessed with all of these really strange gifts. Like, she's able to heal people with the touch, but she's never been able to actually demonstrate that because um, her grandmother, who is, has passed on, but used to always tell her that people just weren't ready to, to accept that or to, um, you know, see that as... A normal thing and she would face all sorts of scrutiny if she did it out in public so she never did although she would do it with friends who kind of knew a little bit about what she could do mm-hmm. and she also has this other gift of um, this incredible singing voice and that was gifted to her from this dark shadow fairy who had visited her when she was younger and of course that too is something that you know <laughs> nobody knows about and mm-hmm. the people who do sort of think that she's a little bit crazy for um you know, coming up with such a story, but he gave her this voice, but kind of um, in a Phantom of the Opera style, he sort of controls it a little bit still. Okay. You know, so he's kind of pulling the puppet strings and, yeah. So have you always been a writer? Um, Do you do it full time? I I do it full time. I um, also teach preschool um, a couple of days a week. It, it's not something I've I've always done, and it's funny because it's not even something I ever really thought of doing. I've always loved writing. I've always loved stories, mm-hmm. and I loved, you know, English lit classes and all of that kind of stuff. But it wasn't something until, um, oh gosh, probably just before starting to write Fire and Ice, which was mm-hmm. about six years ago when I started it, that the idea came to me. And um, and then it's kind of a crazy story, but I was <laughs> I went to see um, a psychic at a psychic fair with a friend of mine, mm-hmm. and I got this really intense, powerful message from the psychic that I'm supposed to like she could see me with a stack of books, and that I was supposed to sort of go in this direction. And I thought, huh, well, that's interesting. <laughs> it wasn't something I thought of before. Right. So you, know? you ended up having a story to tell. And, yeah, and cool. you're and you're on um, on book three. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Well, it are. came true. <laughs> and see, I've always been a little skeptical about that. You know, I remember. Um, I think it's that movie. It's that movie Big, where you see um, 
that machine and it's telling, you know, what's going to happen and things of that nature. And that's the only thing that I've ever associated um, with a, with a reading before. So here you have one that actually came true because you're a published <laughs> author now. Two books already out, one on the way. And then I see here for Fire and Ice, it's been optioned for a film. So how cool is yeah. that? That was really surreal. <laughs> Were you expecting that? I was wanting it. I'm not sure if I was expecting mm-hmm. it. I was really, that was sort of, in my mind as I was writing it, I was, I could see it okay. playing out like a movie. Uh-huh. I mean, I'm pretty visual. I'm like one of those um, Pinterest absolute addict junkies. Like I could spend my entire life on there collecting photographs. Like I love imagery. Mm-hmm. And um, so when I was writing it, I could see it playing as a movie in my head and I thought it would be really amazing for that to happen. And so, you know, I did whatever I could to pursue it in, you know, the limited directions that I could. And it just kind of all clicked into place, actually, in the weirdest way. So, well, that's it. That's exciting that's news. Cool. It's always, um, I think, great for for readers when you become um, engrossed in, 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 a, in a saga, in a trilogy, in, in an author, and then to see it, to see it come live on television. You know, I've had some experience where they, they've done a great job and you're sitting there and you're itching for more. And then yeah. there are many where you say, not as good, not as good <laughs> as the book, but you know what? It probably should never be as good as the book because the author just brings so much to it when you're reading it. Um, so it's yeah. just a little extra treat when we see it on the screen. <laughs> it's true, yes, I know. And it, it can, it's such a letdown when it's not as good. But, I mean, you can't put everything that's in a book into the movie, I guess, because it would just be, you know, like 12 hours long. <laughs> right. Now, so you live in Canada. I do, yeah. And and tell us a little bit about this, this new world for you as an author. Um, in Canada, do you have lots of opportunities for, for book signings and book book events and things of that nature? I do, yes, um, especially locally and especially since the um, the news of the, um, the, the film deal came out because there's been a lot of press around that here lately and a lot of buzz, which has been really exciting and so many, you know, warm, receptive people excited about it with me, which is nice. And so I do a lot of local book signings, and I have some coming up in the States as well, actually, which is kind of cool. Oh, well, awesome. Do you have those dates? Um, will you be posting those dates on your website? Yes, I okay. will, for sure. Okay, yeah. good, good. So we can make sure that we um, get that in. Now, I think, and if I read this correctly, I think you – um, have a connection with a new adult, um, kind of like a book book collection that's coming out with other authors. Did I, I read that do. correctly? Would you, yes, would, you do. Okay, <laughs> we would love to hear about it because a lot of our a lot of our listeners and readers, I would say, um, span from children, middle grade, all the way up to new adult and adult as well. Oh, I mean, cool. I can have okay. a children's book in my hand one day and of course an adult book in it another day. It just, I, I think that's just the beauty of enjoying so many genres. Yeah, exactly. You can step into, you know, any world. That's and right. That's kids right. Books are pretty magical too. I love kids <laughs> stories, but um, yeah. So this new adult one, it was um, a little bit different for me because this is the first time that I've done self-publishing. I've self-published um, some how-to art books, which just felt like a completely different scenario than this. But this is the first time self-publishing um, on my own and mm-hmm. also in a group. So what we did is we each released our individual stories and then we put them together in a box set called Sling. So I'm with seven or six other really incredible authors and they are just, they're so patient. With them. I'm so thrilled that they let me into the group, first of all. <laughs> but I'm also, I like, they're just, it's been wonderful. It's been mm-hmm. such a huge... Um, learning opportunity for me to see how how all of this is done and how it works and um, you know like the whole indie publishing um, phenomenon it's it's amazing really so that's been really exciting to to get involved in that so yeah Entangled Summer it's my first um, attempt at writing Mm -hmm. New Adult and my my first thought was that it was going to be a contemporary romance had to be romance because I just all about the romance Mm -hmm. but I thought yeah, it's going to be contemporary. And then I started writing it, and I thought, okay, yeah, no, it needs something, you know, like I had to put a ghost or a vampire or something in it just because right. that's the way my mind goes. 
and, and, and really so. you have to ride the the way it goes i mean it's going to be it's going to be yours it's going to be something that you put your stamp of approval on it's going to come from your heart so i agree yeah. with that yeah, it's so important. And if you try to force it in another direction, it just doesn't, it really doesn't work. No, no. So, yeah. Not not that I'm a writer and not that I would know, but just just hearing um, just so many discussions through authors, I think that is one of the main pieces. Now, when I was in the classroom, you mentioned that you were um, a preschool teacher. I used to teach um, middle school, and I remember teaching a writing class one year. And really, that's always what I told my, my students. You must write what comes from the heart, what you feel, what you know, because if you're writing something just to write it to appease me, it's not going to be your best work. Right. Yeah. And, and you won't want to do it <laughs> either. No, so. and that's a big part in, you know, it sort of becomes an obstacle in your creativity flow. <laughs> mm-hmm. you, know, you don't really want to do it or... So how yeah. do you, with the writing process for you, do you reach out to other um, writers? Do you write with a group? Um, how, what does the writing process look like for you? Well, when I first started, I, I wrote the first draft of um, Fire and Ice just sort of on my own. Um, and I finished it and I got to the end and I thought, well, this is really nice, but it was really boring. Like nothing really seemed to happen. And so I went back and I signed up for some writing courses through Savvy Authors, Mm -hmm. which is just a phenomenal site. They've got so many really great workshops for for authors, new and, you know, seasoned authors as well. But I took a few different courses and then I learned the importance of torturing your character and really, you know, amping up the, the conflict. And the story just took on a completely different, it's, it's almost unrecognizable from where it started. Mm -hmm. And so that was, um, for the first few years, kind of my go-to was, was taking a lot of classes, um, Mm -hmm. there to, you know, sort of get a, I don't know, get an anchor on the voice and, you know, sort of which point of view would work best for the story and on all of that kind of thing. And now it's just kind of, I don't know, characters wake me up in the middle of the night and I'll just grab a pen and the notepad that I keep next to my bed and write down a, a scene and then go back to sleep and, and then wake up the next day. <laughs> I, I was going to say, yes, I, I think that having that there to write it down is probably the best thing. So many times, you know, not for me, but like my husband, David, who's also our, our podcast master, he'll say, I just had this great dream. It could be a great yeah. book. And he really doesn't remember all the details in it. And so I'm like, I need to get him a little <laughs> notebook. Like everybody yeah. else is saying, they have a notebook and they will wake up in the middle of the night. I need to get you a notebook so you can write these things down. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, because you almost never remember them in the morning. <laughs> right. So I will I will have to do that. Um, but I think that is um, a, a good thing because that's where those ideas come from. And I kind of, I like the twist that you've, you've put on your fantasy for fairy for fairy song for the fairy song trilogy you know Mm -hmm. that that talk about um Lorelai you know how she can heal people with a touch and um just so exciting so can't wait to to be able to to share fire and ice and bittersweet and I'm so glad to hear darkest flight darkest flight um without giving us any spoilers, would you like to kind of tell us what direction it's going in or will we just have to wait? Well, I'm sort of at a a crossroads right now because something interesting happened in the second book that I wasn't expecting. And Mm -hmm. there are sort of um, two love interests in Mm -hmm. Lorelai's world Mm -hmm. right now. And it's, I've been getting a lot of feedback from readers that they kind of want it to go in the opposite direction from where I was, thinking it would go mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so it's it's kind of been interesting because now I've actually stopped to question okay well who is she going to end up with I'm not sure now <laughs> so, and, and, and so really in essence I think what I hear you saying is just hearing from your fan base and from your readers may um, actually um, help morph things in different directions so, it could. Mm-hmm. It really could, yeah, because, you know, there's all of these, these ideas that they've put in my head that are sort of mixing around in there, and I'm thinking, well, you know, there's some interesting possibilities here I hadn't considered before. So. Well, it's and it cool. looks, 
it looks um, as if, let's see, has this process, you said you started Fire and Ice, I think six years ago is when you started writing it? Right. Okay. And so how, you know, when you're looking at a trilogy, and sometimes we have some of us that love trilogies and some that love standalones, did you know that Fire and Ice would be a trilogy from the beginning? I did, actually. I thought, I, I sort of thought of, as three books, and part of me thinks now maybe I should have made it a little bit longer, uh, like a longer series, mm -hmm. and there might be some companion books that I, I write later on, but I think right from the beginning, I knew it would be, a, at the very least, a trilogy. Mm -hmm. and, your, and your covers are stunning. Your covers are stunning. Did, were you able to be a part of the process of your covers for your novels? Thank you, yes. I was, I was able to sort of give um, my publisher... Um, Clean Reads, they were formerly Estrella Press, they give you a questionnaire to um, sort of guide the cover artist, like what do you absolutely want on the cover, what would you not like to see on the cover, and sort of questions like that. And I didn't put a whole lot of info in because I just wanted to see, you know, what the, the artist would come up with. And every single time I've been blown away, like design number one, it's just been amazing. Mm -hmm. So I'm really, I'm really thrilled with that. And I want that dress. I know. <laughs> it, 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 yes, it, it is beautiful. It is beautiful. It's I different. particularly love um, also just the way, you know, you can't see her face um, yeah. really in either one. And for me as a reader, it still leaves an element of visualization for me when I'm reading to kind of see and feel what the characters look like. Um, sometimes I, I don't like to see, you know, the everything about it on the mm -hmm. cover. Here you still kind of have a secret of who she is and we can kind of make our own interpretations of who yeah. Lorelai is. Exactly. And you paint a picture in your mind. I totally agree with you. I'm like that too. I just, you know, because it, it never matches. Oh, no, <laughs> it doesn't. You know, it's just, yeah. And and sometimes people will post, you know, pictures of, of, of characters, maybe if they're coming out in a movie or something like that, if the movie, if the book is turning into a movie, and I'm like, no, really didn't <laughs> see that character <laughs> as him, but okay, I'll, 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 I'll deal with it for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've had some lengthy debates on casting when we were just sort of coming up with dream casting on the, um, when we did the Facebook launch for Bittersweet, the um, producer was on, and so we were just throwing around some different um, potential actors for, for different um, characters mm -hmm. in the book, and everybody's ideas were completely different. It was so interesting. Will you be heavily involved um, with uh, Fire and Ice? with the film? I hope so. I mean, as involved as they'll let me be. I've been, um, they said that I could co-write the screenplay, which is, is really cool, because it's mm -hmm. not something I would want to take on by myself, because right. it's completely different than writing novels. Mm -hmm. But I love that I get to be a part of it, because they want the movies to stay as true to the books as possible, which was part of why I loved this um, production company I just thought that's an amazing thing because sometimes they take books and they can just sort of do whatever you know they want with them and which is fine because sometimes what they come up with is really brilliant but for the readers who love the original story it's it's kind of a letdown so I'm really glad that I have that kind of input and I hope to sit in on casting and I've been asked for input on settings and um, film locations and that sort of thing too so it's been pretty cool. It's an exciting process. <laughs> oh, absolutely. It does yeah. sound exciting. We're, we're so um, happy for you. It's just going to be going to be big time. Thank so you. you'll be thinking about that and thinking about um, Darkest Flight in your trilogy. And you've just got a lot of things going on. The Fling Box set as well for all of those new adult readers out there. So tell me, Michelle, when you aren't writing, um, when you just have to step away from the keyboard and just jump into something else. How do you how do you spend your time? What do you like to do for fun? Well, I love reading. I'm an avid reader, which I think is probably really common among writers. Um, I also do sculpting and polymer clay. I love to have my hands in anything creative. But it was it was really interesting. I was listening to um, your interview with um, Tonya Cooper 
And I was thinking, oh, my God, I need to have coffee with both of you because <laughs> there are so many things that I love that were things that you guys listed that you loved. Like, I love coffee. <laughs> I love sci-fi. Um, Anna Green Gables. And that oh, my goodness. Rain. I was like, ah, I love that. <laughs> So, so yes, we, we could have a little um, gathering and just have some big discussions on those pieces because I grew up on that. I love it. And my coffee's right here. And my, and my favorite <laughs> Turvis tumbler is right here beside me. I never have Mind a po- podcast without having my coffee. <laughs> Yeah, and you said it was raining there, right? So, I mean, coffee yes. on rainy days, like, that's yes. nothing better than that. <laughs> it is a rainy, rainy day, but the coffee's here, and I am all about some rain and Anna Green Gables. I will just <laughs> scream it to the mountaintops all the time. <laughs> Those were my oh, favorite geez. shows. And and I have to say when um and I don't remember his first I don't remember his his real name, but when Gilbert passed away, I think recently, maybe oh. in the past oh, so maybe the yeah. six past six in the late six months, past six months or yeah, something of yeah, that nature. That long ago. Yeah, my oh, heart my heart was yeah. broken, but I thought I, I still have my videos. Yes. To, for great. precious memories. Yes. Still have my videos. And I can't remember if I told Tanya this, but I would just one day just like to, to travel to where that show was filmed and just, I mean, because the yeah. air just looked so pure and exactly. it just. Come to Canada. It's here. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. That, I, I know. Complete... I've never been either, but I would love to Okay. Know. I was wondering, yeah. I was going to ask you, so you've never been. Okay, you've got to no. go. I know, yeah. You really have no awesome. excuse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it's right there for you to just grab and visit, you've got to go, and then you must make a post on your blog, because believe Absolutely. it or not, there are a lot of fans out there who would love to be able to see it through your eyes as well. Yeah, yeah, that okay. would be really cool. Yeah. We wish you much success. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Well, Mich- <laughs> Michelle, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Oh, my pleasure. I was so excited to talk to you. Great. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, and also, um, you have a street team, so we will make sure that we put the link up for anybody who would like to join Michelle's street team. And, um, that would be um, fantastic. That's right, an email list so you can get all of the news firsthand. I think sometimes uh, we forget that just joining – through the the email list, you get the information firsthand. <laughs> right, you do exactly. You. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll put we'll put some links in there. I get lots of emails on a daily basis because I like getting that information firsthand. Well, Michelle, you have yeah. an awesome morning. Okay, and thanks for thank joining you so us. Much. You're a treat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. We want to thank all our listeners again. Check us out at aleisuremoment.com. You can like us on Facebook and Twitter. Follow us on Instagram and check out our new YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up. Have a good one. Cool. <laughs> That's you know. And the one that's going to Twilight, when I saw that, I saw the little um, the post for it on, your, on the Leisure Moment um, blog yes. site. And I was like, mm-hmm. that's so familiar. I'm sure I must have been there because I was a huge Twilight fan. I love the books, love the movies. And... I was, you know, always looking for anything Twilight. And I'm sure I've been on that blog before. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I must have Which been. You pro- so it's, you, it's, it's yes. pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sure you probably did. Um, there was, uh, many years ago, there was a, twi- it was called TwiCon. Do you remember that? It was a. Yeah. Do you remember? Twi- you didn't go to it, did you? I didn't go. I wanted oh, to go. Okay. I was about to say. <laughs> I really wanted to go. If you were like, there. 15 year old really... son's rolling his eyes at me, but I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I go. <laughs> okay, well, I was there and loved yeah. every bit of it. I kind of had oh. to beg just a bit because, you know, grown adult, leaving the kids at home to go to <laughs> that. So, Why not, though, right? I mean, <laughs> well, it was the first time that I really, I mean, really did something out of the box, and it was mm-hmm. so exciting. Um, and some of my my best friends, are from that from that group yeah mm-hmm. oh. <laughs> so anyway i just got off on a different subject <laughs> yeah i think but, that's awesome wow yeah so anyway i'll i'll um i'll post a picture on twitter for you 
of, okay, of something. Cool. I'll surprise you in about five minutes and, and say, hey, okay. this picture's for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So email me.